It is now almost exactly a year after the recordings of the Medellin examples that are in the demonstration course. Uh, the Medellin um, sessions were basically two settings. One was um, a bigger seminar where you will see the, the big hall with the white background and uh, the other setting was um, a group seminar in a smaller town near uh, Medellin, uh, Colombia. And uh, the, both seminars took place in October 2018, so now it's uh, November 2019, so a year later. And, um, I've been contacted by, um, actually I've been in touch with several of uh, the people I uh, work with there and um, also with some who I worked very intensively uh, with and uh, it, that in itself doesn't contain too much information for you but uh, a, a thought that has crossed my mind which I would like to elaborate a bit and share is the the role of the demonstrations and the kind of message they are supposed to send. Um, I want to be very careful about the question of uh, how much um, are the demonstrations being used for spectacle and how much do they actually transmit messages that I want to transmit. And one aspect of it is that when I now think back of um, um, back, uh, back of these experiences in these sessions, um, I, the interventions I sh I'm showing in the demonstrations are, I would say, quite elaborate. And uh, people might raise their hands and say, like, how can you do that? And I'm trying to put out the provocating question, right? Like, how could you do that without knowing people really well? And um, let me say this, what I'm showing there is really what I would, from the place where I was standing and where I am still standing, the really absolute limit of what you should ever do. You know, when I am saying things in such a general way, um, please do not take that like I would be trying to make rules here for everybody. But when it comes to my good consciousness and what I think is good practice, um, a guiding principle has to be knowing one's limitations and being careful when it's about especially other people. Which means uh, I would like to emphasize that yes, I am using these demonstrations in order to show a look that is possible. But you do not always have to go so far in such a short time. Um, this reflective process of where, where to draw the line, what should happen within one seminar or one session, uh, has to be an ongoing process and I'm sharing this with you because I'm not interested in creating an image of myself as I am done, I'm ready and I can tell you everything. I'm, I'm on, 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 on that level where I am also evolving, learning, reflecting and I'm very critical with my own work. Um, let me just put that out there, all right, for better or worse. And so now, uh, my intro was that I said to you, like, I still have been in touch with these people and I'm not only taking, take that as a compliment and no, look, isn't that nice. For me, it's more uh, a source of very important information. Um, in the past, I have um, had interventions in, in different contexts and what was missing most was a long-term feedback or a structured way to follow up. And uh, the main motivation there for me is to have actual feedback and see if the interventions that I was a part of um, did have the, the outcome, the midterm or long-term outcome that I would expect, that I would hope. 
um, even though if you do that on an anecdotal basis, like with just a few individuals, you still will have trouble separating the cause from the effect and uh, or, you know, uh, deciding if it's a correlation or if it's a causality. I mean, this is the, 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 the challenge in that situation. So it's very easy to say like, okay, look, the person is doing better. Uh, that was me, you know, or the person is not worse. So look, at safe. I would like to be very careful with these kind of statements because as you might be aware of, I do have a quite sound academic background. So I'm not sacrificing that for marketing and just giving people simplified truths. I don't like it and I will not do it. And um, reality is very complex and giving in just to simplifications of it will not empower you. It will give you quick answers, it will satisfy you and you maybe have a little dopamine rush here and there and you feel great about yourself, but the truth will find you. So it's better to stay reflective there and differentiate, especially in times where populism is the new black. So, these are very important sources of information for me for security reasons. I unfortunately do not have them from everybody I ever worked with. would be desirable, but um, so certainly that will influence my uh, setups and um, the, the, the design of my intervention seminars, etc. to incorporate that uh, in the future even more consciously and in a, in a planned way. Now what happened with Colombia was that, you know, these people just kept in touch and, you know, it was flowing and then now I know and now I have th that source of information and I'm grateful for that. But I did not um, intentionally plan for that. Maybe because sometimes I also was a bit too careful, didn't want to intrude on people and having contact details and get back and ask and, you know, follow up and all that. But, you know... Uh, it's necessary. Fortunately, that what I hear is positive. Um, and um, now coming back to that aspect of how much you can do there in a session, the preparation for actually processing emotional pain and suffering is key. And that should never be overlooked. And this is why I put these demonstrations in the in a mostly un, unedited uh, manner so that you can see. But still, there are aspects missing. Um, the, uh, for example, like, um, uh, let me talk about the two longest demonstrations that are right now in the demonstration course. Those are the one the one I have called uh, the surviving cancer example, and the the other was uh, the abandonment and the lack of the father. This is the other example. Like these two examples are like the right now the longest and completest. They're in Spanish language, but they're subtitled, and uh, we can, we did our best to make the subtitles nice, even though they do have their flaws. But I think you will get it. It comes across what I'm trying to tell there. <clears throat> So the point is that, yes, the demonstrations, the videos are quite long. They are in, in itself, like almost unedited. There is no break. There is nothing being taken out except for, I think, sometimes in the beginning, I've been, you know, of course, summarizing stuff a little. But the actual intervention is, is one, one bit, except for just changing the camera angle. So I wanted to display it the way it happened. But that... Um, is disguising a little that there was stuff happening before that. Because just, just starting what I did there with a person you otherwise would not have spoken to like at all, I would feel would not have been ever something I would have done. So let me tell you what happened. So in the case of the surviving cancer, I mean, the seminar was already going on for like almost two hours roundabout. 
it was declared um, like the headline was psychological first aid uh, that was something we felt uh, was needed in, in in that environment in Medellin to be open to both psychologists and non-psychologists who are just curious and interested so the the term of psychological first aid usually puts the bar very low of what people feel oh that could be for me you know first aid physical first aid is something people are familiar with everybody does that too so why should i not go there even if i'm not a psychologist so that worked and many people came well, i think like 50 people were there it was a free seminar and that was a nice setup but then going in the seminar something happened which um it's a little bit of background now to give you an insight about how i sometimes think and feel about things but um that the 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 actual excitement about what we're doing precisely being um resource work you know i let the group do some simple resource work and you know the feedback from the group was mainly like you know that is that everything you know <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that might be, I, I didn't do it well because actually resource work is very exciting. Um, and if you do it right, it's, I feel it's very impressive. But anyway, that was the feeling. I came a little bit under pressure, like, you know, and there was an assistant of mine and I checked with her and like, what do you think? Because we were on the break and I was like, what do you think? Should we, what should, how, where should we go? What should we do? What should I do? And she's like, no, you show them more, you know, and I go, all right. And it wasn't the headline of the, of the seminar. So actually I diverted a bit from what was planned. And, uh, uh came with this idea of, okay, well, I'm going to show you guys. <laughs> But what had happened already, I had stabilized the group um, to show them basically resource work a bit. Uh, we did something, yeah, some resources, reinforcement. I do, do think we already did butterfly hug. And then they went in the uh, groups of two or three people it, to practice the method in small groups because my intention was to give them something. Um, it's better to give them few things, few techniques or just one do it thoroughly than many things just talking about it. I'm not a big fan of the just talking about methods. I want people to really do it and understand it. So there was already some stabilization going on. And usually, you know, when groups are working, I'm doing my rounds and I'm talking to people. I'm looking where are questions in this and that. And I had already talked and now I'm getting where I want to get to. I had already talked to that uh, um, that um, woman who then volunteered and she already had a resource. And interestingly, the resource she found there by herself with someone else was the birthday. So without we ever had touched on the distress and the trauma, uh, if you will, she had that resource of the birthday and if you have seen the demonstration or if you will see the demonstration you will see the significance of that and i'm like isn't now in retrospect i'm like isn't that amazing like that always keeps happening you know like <clears throat> there are no coincidences in that you know stuff is connected and it's usually important what you get I didn't know that in that moment, you know, she told me, oh, I have a birthday and this and this. And um, we do have that recorded somewhere, but uh, I, I do think I didn't, you know, give it too much importance in that moment. I think she just wanted some reassurance and this and this. And then also she, I think before the actual real intervention started, she, she also asked another question. So I had my points of contact with her. And even if that sounds very, you know, what did I actually know? But yes, I knew there was some stabilization going on and she had a little bit of time of already speaking. So she had some report with me already. And uh, so then bringing her in with that topic um, was possible. Also, there are, of course, in such... Um, in such a process um, points where I would if things would have 
gone not the way that we all hope they go, uh, to contain or stabilize or not continue processing or not even really start processing, depending on, on what that was. What also favored it to do it in a group was that it was something like a disease. It was already over. It was survived, like literally. So this is certainly something that is um, a good example for such a such a setting. And um, since the distress related to that. Like her topic was a little bit breaking the stereotype of like all the trauma is always abandonment or sexual abuse. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yes, these are very, very frequent and important topics you have to be able to deal with if you want to learn that. But there are issues which are structured in a different way and they shake us up a little that we're not like always in, in, in the only thinking in those categories and I do feel they, they they might maybe for an audience also be a little bit easier to bear uh, than the others I mentioned um, because okay her disease and she survived it so you, you always have something to go back to and be easier to 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 keep a distance from you know even if it moves you very much but you know, she made it. I mean, um, that's something that is a bit easier in her case. And uh, so I do think it's something, um, well, also important aspect, probably not too triggering for for people who do not have the triggers that of situations that she's describing, which doesn't make it any less serious what she's describing. Do not want to be misunderstood there, but it was just a different category. So that was the one. Um, uh, the young man, also there something happened before the actual session. I, um, what happened was, it always makes me smile thinking of that. I was, he was a bit quiet mostly. I think he had one or two questions and Usually when somebody asks questions in such a seminar, and if it's many people, that always shows a certain specific kind of interest. I'm not saying everybody who asks a question necessarily wants to go on the chair and, you know, do something, but in a way, yeah. And then there was a longer break. And then he said to me, if you could, if you could ask me a question, I'm like, sure. I sat down and again, that, that in the break, oh, I have a question. If you ever do these kind of seminars, uh, do give it that space. I know it takes away your break <laughs> that you might need at that also I would have needed that day because I was quite exhausted that day. The preparation was tough. It was a, the environment was totally not my comfort zone. I was I was pretty exhausted. I also think it showed in the in the later recordings. Um, but anyway, and so it takes away your break, but it is worth it. It's very important because that's the moment where some people show I do have something and if you can give that space then you know you take your break then afterwards so that happened he asked me that and he had a point and he was like yeah I don't know and I've I don't know if that's something for here if, if I could do that like he quite directly signaled that he might be interested in but he was doubting that and uh I think he wanted to know if that is too private, is that too deep, is it too much, is it something that should be put out here. And the actual decision, if it's too private for him or not, it couldn't be done because you're in the situation, as I'm describing in the ESSP, how you do you do your fact finding? You cannot just say, well, tell me, what's it about? You know, that would not be the way to do it. So I had to be a bit careful. I'm like, okay, give me some indications. Just tell me like the coordinates of it. Okay, family. Is it something specific? Mm, I kind of, I, I do think I might have probed a bit. Mm, you know, was it abuse? And you know, you know, no, no, no. It's just my, you know, my father wasn't there, and that. And I'm like, okay. Well, still. Uh, sexual abuse might still come up that you're never really safe that it wouldn't 
but at least it wasn't just you know coming because I wouldn't have taken that you know if somebody would say to me uh, you know yeah and I I do remember an abuse and I wouldn't except you know there are very specific circumstances in that in that setting as you see there I wouldn't because the group didn't know each other the 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 the, the, the setting would absolutely not have provided for for that so but he said no it was just my father wasn't there and um and this and it was all a bit vague i'm like okay you know so i played the ball back to him and said we could so i w i'm telling you i will after the break ask if somebody wants to uh work in front of the group if you raise your hand i will pick you but it's totally up to you and now in hindsight i, I looking back I, I think it was a good strategy i haven't really planned that but um that was good because it left him the initiative he still also had a few minutes to think about it and he could really kind of sense mm, do i want to put myself out there and so on so i left it to him and also he wouldn't have lost his face like if he would have told me in front of the group and then i would have huh now you want to come uh, which might have pressured him. So no, and then he uh, exactly that happened. You know, I asked a question. I think that's also in the video. I'm asking the question, and the question I'm asking there, the right at the start of the video. Yeah, uh, I, I'm seeing. I think I'm saying in Spanish. I alguien que quiero que procesar algo. No, is there somebody who wants to process something in front of the group? And then his hand goes up. I think it takes a few seconds. I mean, look at it. And. Um, yeah, basically that's it. And then started that uh, with him. I didn't have anything else than that. But that was important. That that establishes the the necessary, how should I say that, a report? I don't know if that's the right word. But, well, this is what happened then before. And in that example, I would also like to share with you, without going to, to too many details, because that might disclose too much but I did meet the young man uh, another day um, for another talk uh, which um, a bit followed up on that uh, it was not a therapy setting it wasn't public uh, actually we had lunch together and a longer conversation and uh, rounded that whole thing up in a beautiful way that I could feel like yeah, you know, the inter the intervention had was contained by something more. It wasn't just that and then goodbye. It was, you know, contained in something that there was a continuity. And um, I really hold the these experiences very dearly. The the problem with or a problem with these kind of demonstrations are that it. The, the intention of the seminar was a different thing. I wanted to show very simple methods uh, that everybody could do and take home. But that don't impress nobody. And I'm very conscious that I just used the word impress because I'm not doing it to impress. But sometimes if people are not a little bit like, oh, oh, okay, they don't give it the credit it deserves. You know, like, being humble is all good and fine, but if this humbleness leads to the fact that you become invisible, um, that's a problem. So it's, it, it's a question always about the right amount of spectacle. So in a way, yeah, I left some of the audience behind, definitely. Not many really got what was happening there. Also, these kinds of demonstrations, you need patience. Like you have to have patience for like 20 minutes or 25 until that moment comes where you could actually be like, wow, wow, something just happened. But it is not okay to transplant this wow to a two-minute video and just put some heartbreaking music and say, oh, and this is how he or she overcame her trauma. This is not how it, that's not real, you know. <laughs> and I know, I know it's an uphill battle, 
because we do live in a world where every story, every narrative, like especially in social media, conditions us to that. Okay, I want I want the thing in two and a half minutes. Like finally give me like what happened oh this happened that happened that happened everybody cried isn't it beautiful and that all has to happen in two and a half minutes like we don't we when i say you know we're conditioned to not give the time but you know i might and i've thought about doing short versions of it um but you know there i'm sacrificing some aspect of truth for um you know, giving it to people in a shorter way, but I do know that I will keep on being very careful with that. It cannot become the message. It can be like a teaser or a preview or, you know, okay, this is the summary. But then here, you know, go to the full thing. I'm not trying to sell the three minute version to you as that would be how stuff works because one of the most important things I want to accomplish is um, debunk myths about interventions on the emotional level and um, a timeline uh, is a very important aspect of it. Like within what timeline can you expect what to happen? What has to happen so that? And uh, timeline is very important there among other things. So those are my reflections about this. I hope it provides you with additional information uh, in understanding these, um, these demonstrations and others too. And um, of course, I hope you do enjoy. I hope you do take the time to watch them uh, and um, together with the explanations and my reflex reflections about the methodological uh, aspects of it, I do think that um, you will be empowered to understand why I did what. And um, I do think that that's a very exciting way to learn, which is my ultimate goal, that you are able to, if you want to, and if you, of course, invest the necessary time and effort to, to do that. So... Uh, so much for that now.